Hola Marina, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, ven, ¿tú qué tal? Pues mal, porque hay una avería en el edificio, no hay agua caliente y estoy hecho un guarro. ¿Y qué vamos a hacer contigo? Que no he podido afeitarme durante dos días y me siento... Bueno, da igual, así es la vida. Oye, la avería solo está desde ayer por la noche. Vale, bueno. No me he afeitado. No pongas excusas. No me he afeitado durante unos días. Hoy me quería afeitar y no hay agua caliente. Aparte de eso, fantástico. Porque es... Es septiembre. ¿Y qué pasa con septiembre? Bueno, pues que en septiembre siempre tenemos como esa inquietud de aprender cosas nuevas y de no sé, como de establecer un, ritmo, un nuevo ritmo de... ¿Por qué? Eh, porque nos recuerda a nuestra época en el colegio, supongo, que es cuando empezabas el curso, entonces un poco es esa similitud, aunque ya no vayas al colegio, existe ese paralelismo y todos tenemos ganas de eh, pues tomarnos las cosas con más calma después de las vacaciones, de aprender cosas... Para mí el año nuevo realmente es como empieza ahora, en septiembre, no en, no en, enero, en enero, siempre. Exacto. Me encanta esta época del año. Uh -huh. eh, y bueno, eh, esperamos que vosotros vayáis a, a ir a por ello ¿no? con vuestro español y, y hace un esfuerzo enorme ahora en septiembre. Pero Marina, eh, ¿nosotros qué vamos a hacer? ¿Tú qué vas a, hacer... a retomar este año? ¿O qué, vale. ¿Qué vas a aprender de nuevo? ¿Qué vas a hacer? Bueno, pues voy a hacer un curso de, de profe de yoga para embarazadas, que me hace mucha ilusión, y voy a seguir aprendiendo e intentando eh, poner en práctica lo que ya he aprendido eh, para ser una doula. Dula. Dula. Pues yo, como es septiembre y también tengo ganas de aprender, pues voy a seguir con mi, con mi dibujo, con mi arte, aprendiendo a, a dibujar mejor. Y, y la verdad es que voy a seguir aprendiendo español, porque llevo 12 años ya en Madrid, pero siempre estoy aprendiendo cosas nuevas que voy a compartir con vosotros, obviamente. Y, y bueno, no sé, nos gustaría que vosotros nos contaseis, se dice, Muy bien. Eh, lo que tenéis en mente para mejorar vuestro español. Eh, cuéntanos de mi hermana Eli. Ah, tu hermana Eli, eh, que está aprendiendo español y está en España ahora mismo, en Almería, eh, ha decidido que durante todo septiembre va a escribir un diario en español, como una manera de practicar. Aprovechando que está aquí, además, pues para tener como, eh, pues, eh, como único idioma el español durante, durante este tiempo. Así que eso es una es un buena idea, escribir cada día lo que habéis hecho durante el día en español, ¿por qué no? Bueno, si tenéis más ideas interesantes, déjanos un comentario y pues nosotros estamos aquí para ayudar, ¿verdad? Para ayudaros. Para ayudaros. Gracias, Marina. Y a mí también. <risa> bueno, pues... Nada más. Nada más por hoy. Nos Hasta vemos. Luego. Okay, so we've got some notes to go through uh, with you now about some of the best phrases and vocabulary and language from the conversation that we just mm -hmm. recorded. So we've got our notes here. Forgive us if we look down at them every now and again, because there's a lot to go through. There's loads of great language from that short first part of the video. So I started off complaining, Marina, about... Uh, hay una avería, about the avería, actually. Yeah, but we've got an avería in the building in which we live, uh, which means there's a problem or a fault. In this case, there's no hot water, which uh, I've decided means I can't shave. No puedo afeitarme. So, afeitarse is to shave. Mm -hmm. um, and, well, what did I say? I said, estoy hecho un guarro. What does that mean, Marina? Without wanting to be rude, it means... Uh, You are like a pig. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm hecho un pig. I'm like a pig. A guarro is another way of calling a pig. So it means I'm dirty. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, yes, not, not polished. Can I say polished? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not unclean, but it's a way of saying that I'm feeling a bit rough around the edges today. <laughs> rough around the edges. Let's do it like that. So sometimes, for example, if we're going to go out for dinner and I've put on an old t-shirt and Marina wants me to look smarter, she'd say, Ben, you can't go out like that. Estás hecho un guarro. No, vas hecho un guarro. Vas hecho un guarro. Mm -hmm. And I usually In this say, case is... 
that's my style. I like going out like this or something. And then we have a, and then eventually I put the t-shirt on that Marina wants. But anyway. Of course. <laughs> so, estoy un means I'm yeah, a bit rough around the edges today in this case. Um, Marina, what's next on our list? Eh, tenemos esa inquietud de aprender cosas nuevas. Okay, so we were talking about this time of year, September, when it's really this time that naturally we want to learn new things because of the school year. It's kind of programmed into our system forever. So Marina used this phrase, tenemos esa inquietud yes. de aprender cosas nuevas. The expression would be tener una inquietud. What does it mean? It means uh, to have a desire or something that is building in you that you want to, to develop. Uh, so it's different from estar inquieto. It's confusing because, yeah, inquieto, it sounds very similar, inquietud, inquieto, but if you say estoy inquieto, what does that mean? It means I'm restless. Yeah, you're a bit fidgety, you're restless, could be for lots of reasons, in general, in your life, mm. in, in uh, any given moment. So you've got to be careful between tener una inquietud and estar inquieto. Inquieto, exactly. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's next? Esperamos que vayáis a ir a por ello. Okay, so this is what we were saying about we hope you're going to go for it with your Spanish. So we had uh, esperamos que vayáis, mm, of course, using the present subjunctive after esperar, uh, a ir a por ello. A por ello is when you want someone to get something, like if you are uh, competing for, I don't know, a marathon or something, you can say a por ello or go for it. Or to the football team. We, had, was, we had it non-stop during the World yeah, Cup in Spain. That it was, was, it was the like the, the slogan lema, on telly. Yeah. Yeah. The slogan in Spanish is lema. The lema was a por ello, go for it. Okay, now Marina, I said I was going to go back to my art and so on. Marina, apart from other things, is going to learn French and also she wants to... I didn't mention the French. I oh, you forgot, forgot to mention the French. Yeah. She wants to learn French. Okay. Just a bit. That's um, a hobby. And apart from that, you said you wanted to study to be... Uh, profe de yoga para embarazadas. Okay, so profe, short for professora. Yeah. Uh, and yoga for pregnant women. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. And this is going to help you in your mission to be a... Dula, a doula. A doula. Now, mm -hmm. a doula, some of you will know, it's somebody who helps pregnant women during the... Uh, pregnancy, birth, birth and postpartum period. Uh, yeah. yeah. If you want to know more about that, uh, one of our gold audios uh, is all about that. So, very interesting. Now, Mm, what's next, Marina, on the list? Okay, then next is the subjunctive. Nos gustaría que vosotros nos contaseis lo que tenéis en mente para mejorar vuestro español. Huge <laughs> phrase, but again, we've got another subjunctive. Nos gustaría que, we would like you, que vosotros, nos contaseis uh, lo que tenéis en mente. Nos contaseis, again here, is... Uh, I think it's the preterite subjunctive, I hope I haven't got that wrong, but we're using it here after the conditional, again, because we're using nos uh, gustaría, it's like a, a desire or a wish, so we mm -hmm. need the subjunctive after that, and because we start with the conditional nos gustaría, then we need to go back to the preterite to, subjunctive to the past, yeah. for the second part. Okay, and it's also interesting in this sentence, the expression tener en mente, ¿qué es lo que tenéis en mente? What, you, what, what are your ideas? What, what literally, have you, what have you got in mind? Yeah, tener okay. en mente, it's it's the same in English. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great phrase. Yeah. Uh, ¿Qué tienes en mente para okay. esta noche? What have you got in mind mm. for tonight? And I think we've got one more. Yes, my sister, who is writing a diary in Spanish every day in September, which is a great idea. Um, she's in Spain at the moment, so Marina, you used this phrase. Aprovechando que está aquí. Okay, so she's going to write a diary, right? Yeah. So aprovechando, making the most of the fact that. Yeah, that's in she Spain. She's here, she's going to write her diary in Spain, now she's exactly. surrounded by Spanish. So. Well, I hope that you can aprovechar of this September and, well, whatever month you see this video in, if it's a bit further down the line, to learn as much Spanish as possible and ir a por ello. And also, just as a side note, just to tell you that Madrid in September is very beautiful. It's if wonderful. You, if you want Come to, to Madrid in September, it's cooler than the rest of September the September and October are very nice months to be here. Well. Come and learn some more Spanish. And in the meantime, uh, ya sabéis, you can find us in notesinspanish.com. Hasta luego. Hasta ahora.